So this is a brand new uh, Team Powers Actinium uh, V5. So I actually skipped a generation. I, I didn't get the the V4. I used to have a V3, I believe 21.5, 21.5 or 17.5. I believe it's 21.5. Now, one of the things that caught my attention, the reason why I got this motor is a lot of companies are going to the three-piece design, and then you have the three really long screws. Uh, this looks very similar to the Phantom Helix. That's the reason why I picked up this motor. I was curious. It looks very similar to it, the way the end bell adjusts everything. Uh, so uh, I thought, hey, this must be a pretty cool cool motor. And the reason why I like it is because it's it's easy to just put everything back together. That's the reason why. And the other thing too is you can remove the end bell and not mess with the timing. Uh, that's that's the other reason why. So once you put this thing back on, timing is set. Uh, well, I mean, I guess that's the case with many other motors. Uh, same same thing, uh, except for this one. Well, with my experience with the Helix is because it screws on here to these ends, you don't have to mess around too much with adjusting just so you get the same even spread and timing. Uh, that you had before, assuming you went through it, set it up, uh, and everything. Uh, but very nice construction. This is definitely a lot nicer than I recall. It's a large plate. There's another motor that I remember having such a wide plate. There we go. All right, now, let's see. So you can't really see, this is the F1, so I still have the Helix in there. I'm gonna be replacing it. Probably not the best one to show. Uh, let's see, here we go. Okay, so this is the Phantom Helix. That's what it looks like. Uh, and camera's not really zooming in. You can see they're very, very similar, uh, and the way they attach, the end bell attaches right here. See, it's the same design. Uh, yeah, these, yeah, these two motors are very, very similar. Incredibly similar. Anyway, I'll just move on. All right, so let's see what I'm looking at. Uh, all right, so this is a longer rotor, so we're looking at a 25.5 approximately. And about, oh, this is a very small. This is a 12 millimeter rotor. Yeah, so the camera's not zooming in. So 11.58, so 12 millimeters. 12, this is, why would you go with a 12? Uh, definitely RPM. So, uh, I'm ex just based on this, I'm expecting this to have really high KV. Uh, so we, we will see. Now my video did cut out. Uh, so unfortunately I only have this particular run, uh, for the KV, uh, but everything else I have it on the data table. So I did get the numbers for everything else. I just didn't realize that my video had cut out. Uh, so, uh, this is what I have, and like I said, as far as the construction, construction is very nice, uh, in general, but the results, uh, we'll see. I have to compare them to the other tests that I have done. So I'm going to start with the rotors first, and this is the rotor and the team powers. This is the V5. Like I said, uh, I don't have information on the V3, uh, but this is the gas reading that I have on these, and... Um, because this rotor was about 11.6, 11 11.58. 11 uh, it's somewhere between the 11.5 and 12 millimeter that Trinity has. Uh, well, for comparison. Uh, so here's the 11.50. So the 11.50, you can see the team powers has 
far more gauss. Uh, so it's a much stronger rotor. Uh, then again, this was never advertised to be stronger. It's actually a lot stronger than it's advertised. And then the other one, the 12 millimeter, would be this 1151. So the 1151, this is the 12 millimeter. So as far as gauss strength, uh, it's very similar. Uh, so the team powers this 11... 0.6, I'll call it. It's very close to the 12 millimeter that Trinity has as far as Gauss strength uh, based on Phantom. Because re remember, when the machine is reading the Gauss, it's reading it from its, its radial. Uh, so however far it is from the machine. Now I could adjust it and make it the same distance every single time. Uh, but I, I wouldn't do that because I don't adjust the stator, right? So the the center of the rotor is always the same distance to the outside of the stator, and then the surface area of the rotor is always the same distance from the stator. Well, unless it's not exactly it, but you know, it's supposed to be the same distance. That's the reason why. Mm. The point is the radius doesn't change. Now, if we look at this over here, uh, let's see. So let's go, actually, let's go up to, to Team Powers first. Uh, so Team Powers, here we go. Again, unfortunately, I don't have the information for this rotor, and that would have been very, very important. Why? Because of this. This is the reason why. Uh, I have a 4.8, and I have a 5.0. This is where I set the motor, right here. Uh, well, this is the KV. So timing, 49. KV 25, let's say 2550. We'll round it to uh, 2550 for the purpose of this. The V3 beats in KV in any respect, really. Uh, so, f But the, keep in mind that the rotors could be completely different, uh, and that's going to uh, change everything. That's one of the reasons why in past videos, I ran tests where I would take a Trinity motor and then swap the rotors and see the effect. Uh, so generally the effect is the following. Uh, for similar diameter rotors, or the same diameter rotors, the more gauss, lower KV, but you get more torque because there's more gauss. Uh, if you have similar gauss, but you decrease the uh, radius, you get more KV, so it gets faster. Um, that's something to keep in mind. I don't know what the rotor is, but if I use this 5.6, for example, compared to this 5.3, uh, no comparison. Let's use the 4.4, uh, 28, nowhere close, even at 5.3 amps. Uh, so the rotor is going to be very important. This one, uh, see, I just forgot the length, but I think the length was 25, 25.5. If this one has a 24, 24.5, that's going to make a huge difference in KV. So this one's going to have much higher KV, but this one's going to have a lot more torque. Uh, so it's good to understand the rotor that we're comparing. So comparing, and unfortunately, I don't have that information. But out of the box, brand new motors. Uh, let's go ahead and take this number. So five amps, twenty-five, twenty-five fifty. Uh, let's see. Compare to the Trackstar. All right, Team Powers is on top. Uh, for that one. Let's see, this is the stock at Trinity. I don't have anything in five amps. Uh, they're close, uh, they're very close. I would say Trinity and Team Paris based on these numbers. This is the X Factor. Uh, they're very, very close. I would say the X Factor and the Trinity are, so see this is four, that's about uh, 2450, yeah. So the the Team Power's Actinium V5, I want to say, is very close to the X-Factor. Uh, those two motors are probably the closest competitors uh, by far, but they are neither one is a match for the Hobby Wing G4. Uh, this, this has a larger diameter rotor, 12.5, uh, I believe, which means more torque. That's a whole millimeter, uh, almost a millimeter. And it's putting out more KVs at lower amps. Uh, this one's going to simply run cooler. Uh, slot machine, slot machine. I prefer the slot machine over the X Factor any time. Uh, here we have a 5.326. 26. 
KVs are very similar, but again, this one has a much larger diameter uh, rotor. Uh, which is interesting. I would have to check the length to see what the length is, or I would have to go back into the old videos and see what the length is. I know I measured the length of this, uh, but that's something to keep in mind. Maybe these are shorter rotors, possibly. Uh, we'll see. Let's see. And then Helix. A Helix is just fast. This is just a really fast turning motor. Uh, here we go. So 5.1, 28. I mean, the Helix is just far more RPM. Uh, because of that, and then the the much more, uh, much more. Uh, it's about the same, very similar to the Phantom Helix. Uh, now I have not run the Phantom Helix. Sorry, I don't know why I said Phantom Helix. Uh, the much more yet, but I will in my touring car. So hopefully at some point uh, I'll have better review. But so far, uh, Phantom Helix does very well. Hobby Wing, I love the Hobby Wing. Uh, it's very resistant to temperature. Uh, at some point, once I remove it, I think I'm going to do an update on the Hobby Wing and just because I know I've overheated this motor 20 million times, I'm just going to test the rotor and see how the rotor has kept its magnetism uh, for kicks and giggles. Uh, but this is it for the data. So I, I, I know, unfortunately, it's a little incomplete because of the V3. Uh, I have uh, mixed feelings about it, uh, but it's really it's it's up to you. Take the numbers take the data, uh, interpret it as you will. And if you think it's a great choice for you, uh, go for it, go ahead and get it. It's, it's very well made. Uh, the design's pretty nice. The, the end part looks very similar to an R1. If you look at the inside, that really thick aluminum piece, uh, and then the end, the, the construction, the way the end bell attaches to the rest of the motor looks very, very similar to a Phantom. So I'm wondering if they sort of took some of the best features of different motors and then combine them uh, in their mind. I, I have no idea. But that being said, I hope this information is useful and informative, uh, or at least entertaining. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,